All right, so we get started today already as we build up the audience. Uh, just something very quick I want us to do, uh, which is a very quick recap of everything we've done. And then we get into today's really exciting community of practice. So thank you everyone for making the time. Uh, I will invite you to do two things. First one is to go to the uh, participants list, uh, find your name, and I want you to quickly rename yourself to your favorite fruit. If you can do that, just quickly rename yourself. Let's see what we have. Uh, you can already see that I am pineapple. So I want to see more fruit now coming up. Scanning there, uh, I see a banana. Hello, banana. Lovely. So one pineapple, one banana. Let's have more fruit. You are basically just going to, I see an apple there. Lovely. So we have one of each. The pineapple, the banana, an apple. Uh, still waiting for Steve, Eva, uh, Dut, Garang. Um, we need you to be fruit, please, so that we see who wins the, the great fruit battle on a Friday morning. <laughs> exactly halfway into the year. Speak to me. Oh, that's a nice one. I love that. Tomato. <laughs> That is a very contentious one. I love it. <laughs> I will use that in the future, actually. Thank you. Thank you for that heads up. So is it tomato or tomato? Is it potato or potato? Is it a fruit or is it a vegetable? Apparently, you are right, and it is a fruit. Ah, watermelon. Fantastic. OK, and a mango. I like this. I like this. So clearly, you guys are, are here with us. Uh, so someone once asked me, oh, oh avocado. I love avocados. Um, uh, I'm not sure that they are fruit or vegetable. They taste like both. But what I can tell you is an avocado will fit in anywhere. Absolutely love avocados. This is really the first class. And you allow me to take a very quick picture. I love this. Uh, where we've done this and we literally have uh, one unique fruit. <laughs> like everyone has a specific uh, unique fruit. Uh, so what are the learnings from this? Uh, very simple. Uh, one is that we are all very unique individuals, so please celebrate and appreciate yourself. Um, and the second one is that uh, because I did say whenever we take classes like this, not only are we wanting you to learn from the content, uh, but you'll find that I'm actually already giving you a number of online class tips just to keep people engaged. Uh, one of the things that people have been doing in the past years is to tune into a class, leave it running, and then completely depart. <laughs> So this is one of the simple ways you can make sure that everyone is checked in. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, avocado, apple, tomato, uh, mango, watermelon, and banana uh, for joining the class. I will now ask that you revert uh, or you go back to your ordinary name. Uh, so once again, back to the participants list, uh, you find your own name and you can change your name uh, to how we preferred it the first time. I'll do mine here. My name is Kudzai. Uh, my country is uh, Zimbabwe, uh, but also Kenya, I suppose. So Kudzai, Zimbabwe, and my institution, Eyes on Hub. How about that? Let's do that. Let's go for our name, country, and your specific hub or institution or media center or whatever you prefer to call yourself. That is fine. Okay, good. I see Sonene is ready. Eva is almost there. We have your name, but I'd love to hear your country uh, or wherever you're sitting in, as well as the institution that you are with. So while you guys do that, I will give you just uh, 30 seconds. It, it won't take long. And I will pull up our slideshow shortly and give us a quick recap. Then we get into today's exciting program. Thank you. All right, as we build audience, um, I propose that we progress and not wait because this is all being recorded. Those that are coming in a little later can always join us and participate. So we ran through and we are still focusing uh, on the topic, creating inclusive spaces for women in tech and media. And just to give a quick recap, this is session four of the four. Uh, in the first session, we treated the simple issue of just introducing ourselves. Uh, we shared the very important objectives, and I really like, like I said, 
uh, the three, which are discussing best practices for maintaining women's participation in uh, different uh, you know, media workshops uh, and tech workshops, how to develop practical skills and tools for implementing these best practices. And then you'll find that uh, you know, tonight or rather this morning, sorry, we will bring to life a number of these conversations now by offering some strategies for addressing challenges faced by your different organizations. This is really going to weigh heavily uh, on the things that you've done. So may I already invite you uh, to share into the group uh, a picture of what you wrote. If you didn't get a chance to unpack it in full and you ended with what the exercise you did with Sonini last week, that's equally fine. Uh, we understand that uh, sometimes adults struggle with homework, which is why we made sure that we did it in class. So what you have is sufficient, is that fine? If you went and built on it, amazing. If you didn't, just take a quick picture, share it with us in the Telegram group uh, of the work that you did. So these were the objectives we were treating uh, and we already spoke about the what, uh, what, why it matters and we will share in the report that will be circulated, uh, how we captured, you know, the why. Uh, we also got a feeling of how you rate yourself in terms of how women inclusive your programs are. And we've been running continuously an idea boards that's still open, by the way, where we were just tracking what your wins are and also what you say are your struggles. Okay. We now want to focus more on the how, uh, what and can should we be doing. And we will do this today through a community of practice exercise where we will start uh, with treating the things that you did under the uh, framework that was shared. You remember that the inequality triangle was shared and we say there are four key aspects. Uh, one is to scan the room and potentially also scan your entire program, scan your institution. Uh, and number two, uh, go ahead and uh, raise awareness, uh, speak to someone who's next to you, someone who's in that same room, the same institution and say, how are we doing? Have a very quick pulse check. That was the exercise we were asking you to do. And then begin to brainstorm a number of solutions. What could we do to fix this? And then of course, more important, and this is perhaps what I should call the unofficial fifth pillar of this training is where you begin to actually go in action. And how we will do it is we'll now call out, uh, you know, uh, the inequality triangles that you generated for your different spaces. Uh, attribution, of course, is to Machepom CB. This is not an original concept we came up with. Uh, we did uh, borrow that particular framework from one Machepom CB. Uh, we did talk about uh, the fact that it's important to find uh, lots of solutions, but it's more important to implement them. Uh, and of course, we did share with you uh, that resource where you can have it in full. Uh, we want now to also uh, bring to life your case studies, because you remember one of the sessions we had uh, was with the amazing uh, Owila Abiro Mercy, who took us through her journey, uh, spoke to us about the things that they are doing. Uh, we gave you an opportunity for Ask Me Anything. And this really is where we ended uh, last time with that exercise, where we asked you a few simple questions before we started, I did not know. Uh, now I have learned. We asked you to complete in class the inequality triangle. And then the last ask was to take a picture and submit it in WhatsApp uh, or Telegram. In this case, we defaulted to the WhatsApp group. So I'm gonna quickly open that and just have a quick check to see if anyone has shared anything. Um, I do not see anything as yet. So the exercise we need to do needs you guys to uh, now share with us what you went and did. Uh, at the very least, you can even take a picture of what you did in class last time that will suffice to enable this conversation. Uh, so we did ask you to go offline with a team or partner, whoever, depending on how your institution is organized, to discuss, type, email, or submit for the next meeting, which we agreed to be today, a week later. Uh, so yeah, expecting to hear from you. So this is how far we've gone. And this is where we are as at today, where we are going to start with this idea of what is called community of practice. I'm going to start by a question as usual. Uh, anyone who knows what community of practice is? Anyone? Or who has been in, uh, in one? Before I give a few uh, quick notes in theory and then we get started. Give you a minute. Checking chat, checking hands, no hands so far. So if you, if you cannot use video, oh, I see something in chat coming through. Okay, let's see what we have here. 
Okay, Karan says, I have no idea. It's good that you've come because workshops of this nature are for us to learn. Anyone else? Anyone else? Any, any idea what community of practice is? Give you 30 seconds to think. Here to learn exactly, no idea too. All right, that's fine. Not to worry, we will take you through that slide and the theory and then you'll see how much fun it is and you also realize that probably you have been in one. Just unaware. Final boarding call for two things. Anyone who has experienced a community of practice exercise. And uh, more importantly, I am now asking those of us that are here to please go ahead and please take a picture of your inequality triangle work and please put it into the chat. That includes you, Banana. <laughs> And I would like to invite, oh, there we go. So Eve says it's like a club with people sharing similar goals. Yes, I will admit that. Uh, I have room for one more, anyone else? Kuma, we welcome you. Uh, yes, you are forgiven for being late. Can't tell who's behind the screen there, but nevertheless, you've just come when we've just finished a recap of what we've done in the past weeks. And we are now getting into our community of practice. I'm checking again, Telegram, Looking again uh, to see if anyone has submitted anything. All right, so guys, we we need you to submit into into WhatsApp. It's a safe space. Sorry, into Telegram. Please do take a picture of the work that you did. Uh, but I see here that Steve is saying, I'll say ideally or in theory, AskNet is a committee of practice. Exactly. So I was going to start by there by saying <laughs> you actually are already uh, in a community of practice, uh, but potentially you did not know it. So let me give you a bit of theory whilst I also once again invite you to share your work into the group. Uh, if not, that would mean I would have to ask everyone in the house today around where they talk us through their work uh, if you are not in a position to take a picture of it. It would have been ideal for you to take a picture of it um, because there's something we wanted to do with that. So community practice, I'm gonna just use this one slide, is actually very simple. It has three things. Uh, there is a domain, there is a community, and then there's practice. Let me define that for you. So a domain is very simple. It is a group of people who have a common interest. If you, uh, I'm a very big fan of Liverpool, uh, the football club, EPL, uh, English Premier League. You would find that there are lots of people who share the same interest. We are easy to identify by two things. Uh, one is we like to wear our red Liverpool jerseys. Um, and then number two, you will find that we like to sign off on social media with the hashtag, hashtag YW, sorry, Yes, Y-W-N-A, uh, which is uh, an acronym for you will never walk alone. Actually, it's Y-N-W-A, <laughs> you never walk alone. So any group of people that has a common interest is what we would call a domain. And then those people can come together, uh, what we call a community, which is a group of people with a common goal of improving. You'll find that AskNet, uh, is actually a community uh, that has common goals of improving. And I'll leave that open-ended because you know, when you joined this community, what did you imagine uh, was the common goal of improving? Perhaps I ask that in the chat, uh, you let me know what your understanding of AskNet is. Uh, you are definitely a people with a common interest and you have a common goal of improving X, Y, Z. What is your imagination? You could put what you think in the chat. But I really, really like the third bit uh, which is the practice where you then have that same group of people sharing experiences. So the strength of a community like this one, like AskNet, is that you have common interests, you have a common goal, and you have an opportunity like we've been doing in the past sessions of sharing experiences. Uh, the idea why we were not preaching at you or uh, lecturing, uh, oh, I see there's a Chelsea, yes, that's my, that used to be my second favorite team. 
not anymore. You're not playing well, guys. So yeah, I'll tell you this. When it comes to community of practice, it's basically us thinking about the fact that we are common uh, people with a common interest, uh, with a common goal of improving, and we also continually share experiences. So that's very basic what a community of practice is. You'll find uh, that this community is definitely a community of practice, but it only becomes so if we do what we'll do in this session today, which is sharing our experiences. That is what a community of practice is. Before I now begin to invite you to open up your mics and speak, uh, I share one more slide, which is definitely my last slide of this session, uh, because after that, it will be a checkout uh, and then we are done. We want to build a toolbox from your experiences. Now, uh, so Nene and I, between us, can share a number of things that you can do uh, to ensure that there's women inclusivity in your programming. Uh, Mercy shared her own example, uh, shared a number of things that she has gone through. Uh, a couple of uh, exercises could be taken out from there. Uh, but I want us to know this, when we build a toolbox, which is something we will do, while we may uh, diagnose, because we've already done that, believe it or not, using some of the tools we used, we might be able to share some things that we think you can make use of. We want you to co-create in building our toolbox, right? Uh, call it an AskNet toolbox of uh, inclusivity tools, where if you're running an exercise or a session uh, and you only have one person attending, there's something that you can do. If there's only two people attending, there's something that you can do. If there are three attending, there's something that you can do. If you have women, but no men, there's something you can do. Uh, if you have men, but no women, there's something you can do. If there are women, but not the younger ones or the older ones or women or people with disabilities, there are things that we'll do. We will build up that toolbox, believe it or not, from everything that you've shared ever since we began, uh, but we do need you to help us cross that line now with sharing your specific case studies and, in, and, and uh, scenarios. So uh, four or five things come into play so that you just know the process that we will take. Uh, the first was that brainstorming from lived experiences, which will come to just now, uh, and then sharing into this community. Already Messi gave us one case study and a scenario. We want to hear your specific ones. And then collecting and collecting experiences will also be important. Uh, as you are speaking, we are recording, we are listening, we are extracting ideas, we are putting in solutions. And then we come in with putting what we call a line of expert guidance and intervention. And out of that becomes an initial toolbox, which will circulate uh, so that there's what we call group testing. And then we can also put in any additional resources or additional resources. So yes, that will be the uh, practice. So before we get into sharing, I want us to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, and I want us to get into a, 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 a role play exercise. So I'm going to ask for a volunteer, anyone, anyone who, who enjoys um, uh, role playing or acting or anything similar to that. I will ask first for a volunteer. Uh, if I don't get one, I am going to pull one uh, and I think this is the time for those who I know personally to know that I'm coming your way because uh, I obviously have some familiarity with your stories. Asking for uh, someone to raise their hand. It won't be difficult. I will just ask a few questions and we'll have an exchange uh, with respect to work you are already doing. All right, anyone? Eve and Dina, you know I'm looking at you, right? <laughs> there we go, all right. Thank you very much. Eve. That one, I knew it. Yes, you knew exactly <laughs> what was coming your way. So you guys have done amazing work with Go Girls in South Sudan. Uh, and think of this as a conversation. So I want you and I to get into character. Here is the setting. Uh, and thank you very much for raising your hand, Eva. Uh, it's good that you've done that because I was gonna pick you anyway. Um, it looks like the connection is a little iffy. So what I'll do is I'll kill my video for now so that we can hear each other. Can you still hear me, Eva? Eva, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, it's on. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear Hello? me? Hello. Hello. Hear me. Hear you. Yes. yes, I can hear you. Okay, mm. fantastic. Yes. So maybe slight delay, but we are fine. All right. So here is the setting, uh, Eva. You are now yes. at the CNN. The year <laughs> is 2036. You've been running Go Girls okay. for, for two decades now. And we want to know what your journey was and what your learnings were. So I'm going to start uh, by introducing you, introducing myself, and I will ask you the first question and we immediately get into character. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, we are live on the CNN and my name is Kudzai. I am your host for the show, What Amazing Women Have Done in Africa. And today as my guest, I am so glad to have the amazing Eva Yayi from Girl Girls South Sudan in the studio. Eva, it's been two decades, over two decades of you guys running Girl Girls in South Sudan. You've done amazing. We want to celebrate you and we want to welcome you to the studio. Thank you very much for being with us, Eva. I'm going to go straight into it with the first question. How are uh, you this Thank you. How are you this morning, Eva? Um, I just feel so energized. I feel like it's just yesterday that we started Go Girls. I can't believe that it's already two decades. And yes, I'm very excited. Wonderful. And Eva, we know you started in South Sudan, but um, in the 20 years that have passed, you've been able to have Go Girls replicated in literally every single country in the continent. 54 branches across Africa. I'm telling you, you are more powerful as Go Girls than the AU. I want to know, how were you able to build footprint across the entire continent? Please tell us, what are the top two things that you did to make sure that Go Girls was in every single African country? Um, it was not an easy journey, but the two things that we actually did were, first of all, we didn't own the initiative as the co-founders, but we were able to include and let other people, especially women and girls, be able to own. So most of our projects and programs are not te technically, um, they are not planned or uh, created by the team but we co-create with the communities that we want to impact and we want to work with. So it's not about us, but it's about the communities themselves. So they are the creators of the content. I love so there this. is co-creation and collaboration. I love this. She says two Cs, there is co-creation, there is collaboration. I love it, I love it, I love it. So you told us that at the very beginning, it was not easy to get women and girls to participate in all of your programs. What would you say were the key challenges you faced that were common across Africa? Perhaps the top three, I know what you've always highlighted in the studio, uh, when you talk the first 10 years, this is now 20 years plus. When we first heard you in the studio, I know you were saying that it was very difficult uh, for women to gather uh, often. Uh, and that was because perhaps there were so many uh, domestic chores to be done. Uh, and some of them were saying, we don't have the money. Others were already partnered, we're saying they are partners, we're saying, look, there are more important things to do. What would you say were the other common challenges which you faced in terms of bringing women and girls together? So the biggest challenge was actually the cultural barriers, the, the issue of culture. That was so hard because we all know you can't just get in there and try to change it just like that. And then the other challenge was actually being able to retain these female participants in our programs. So that was also very complicated and it actually kind of connects to the cultural issue. And of course the issue of uh, not having enough resources to sustain the program. So the participants would fall out. I see, so they weren't enough resources, there were cultural barriers. How did you solution these two? What were the top things that you did at the very least for these two particular situations so uh the cultural change we try to get into the communities and understand them and understand their perspective and why they were not uh, looking into women and girls empowerment 
And then we were able to have working groups. So we introduced a program called the family visits. And these family visits are just about women or communities or families being able to host other families that are participants in, the, uh, in our programs. So we see it and be able to sit and listen to the challenges of these communities. They share, they exchange ideas, they exchange and talk about all their problems with the different families and communities. So uh, when uh, these families host these family visits, they feel like they own uh, this and it creates actually an impact because they feel that their ideas or their voices are being heard and being able to adjust to what positive aspects the cultural, um, the cult their cultures could bring in. We try to incorporate all those into our, um, our programs. And then the issue of funding, of course, if communities are able to own the programs, then they become sustainable because now we have a group of women who, are, who meet, a community of women who meet and talk about issues of their children. And these women met during our programs, but now they have continued this even outside the Go Girls program. And then, uh, of course, the other issue of uh, girls dropping out from the program, we um, tried to come up with other programs that uh, would attract these girls to continue being part of uh, the mentorships we, uh, in case there are opportunities out there because sometimes companies come to us asking for female uh, tech uh, take uh, maybe students who are trained within our programs to join internships or to join uh, their teams so that they could work. So when they see this part of job opportunities coming in through Google's or training opportunities to further their academics, then they are able to stay within uh, the program. Of course, they also have a chance to meet a network of experts from the Google's team, continue mentoring them when they are pursuing their careers at the university to guide them in their projects and yeah. So this is a win-win thing. Thank you. Thank you very much on that happy note. I want to conclude now this interview and thank you once again, the amazing, fabulous Eva Yayi who started off with Go Girls South Sudan 20 years ago, which is now Go Girls Africa. This has been CNN and I've been your anchor, Kudzai. Check it out. Thank you. You know how it goes. Okay, thank you very much Eva, that was amazing. So. I'm gonna pause here before we do one quick second one. And yes, thank you very much. We'll accept your applause. Uh, and I want to invite everyone in the next uh, minute, what were your takeaways, right? If I were to ask you from that exchange, what were your takeaways in terms of uh, some very simple, uh, you know, uh, uh, learnings that you obtained in terms of how women inclusivity was reinforced? Um, how did they attract women? How did they retain women and what perhaps are some learning? So don't write paragraphs. I just want everyone to write something into the chat. Uh, so I see your hand there, Romeo, but I want you to lead us by starting in the chat. Uh, let's start with the chat, then I'll have it from there because I want us to do one other case study. Please, uh, very quickly, in one minute, please reflect on anything you captured. Don't overthink it. Whatever first thing you saw, right? It might be, let the community own it, uh, or it might be, um, you know, uh, uh, co-create with the community, anything that you learned from that exchange, please quickly put it into the chat. I already see uh, Yine says, I cannot wait for Google's Africa. Absolutely, it is possible. I cannot wait either. And I will definitely be at CNN to interview you. All right, please put something into the chat. Let's have everyone speak, whatever you heard, whatever you heard, right? Skills matching to opportunities to retain the woman. I like that, Romeo, thank you. Community engagement, involvement. I like that, Soneni. Let's hear from all of the others. Banana, I want to hear from you too. Internship opportunities. Thank you, Garai. I like that. Right, as this keep coming, please, I want to hear something from everyone. I'm gonna check. If I don't hear from everyone, I will come through and ask you to say anyway. So you may as well put it in the chat, eh? Right, there's someone who was looking for who's kind. Oh, no, no, she's still here. Charlotte, good morning. Are you here with us, Charlotte? Kigezo? Looks like the connection is not doing too good. I would have wanted to do something with it. Okay, so let's do this. Um, I want us to do a second one. I already see guidance and mentoring, 
creating an inclusive and conducive environment for women. Absolutely. All of those very nice and practical. We'll put these in our toolbox. We'll add to them. So the next one, I'd wanted to do this with Charlotte, but it looks like the connection is not that good. Um, so let me invite, oh, there you are. Hi, Charlotte. Hey. Hi, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you very clearly. So I'm going to invite you because I know you can do this. You're a spoken word artist. I okay. want you to get into character. We are now doing as part of our community pra of practice exercise, uh, a, what we like to call role play. Are you okay. up for some role play? Ready. Great, good. So you and I in the next two minutes before we then open up to the rest of the crew are going to do a very quick role play. Here is the setting. We have been running um, media a uh, women program and we are situated in Kampala, Uganda. And what is happening here is that we started four weeks ago. We did a meetup on a Monday uh, and on a Monday at 5 p.m. for the past four weeks. You attended the first one. You were there halfway for the second one. And then you went completely all for the next two. I am the program coordinator and I've just met you now uh in the street and realize you've not come and so now i'm asking you and following up uh what the situation is why are you no longer coming so i want you to be as creative as you can be this i'm really preaching to the choir on this i know you will do this uh and tell me whatever your reasons are remember the setting is it was a women in media uh you know program that we we're running in kampala uganda uh you stay at home with uh, parents i forgot to put the age range uh you are 19 uh, you just have finished your A-level waiting to go to college. You came in first day uh, for the full session. You came in second day, but you left halfway and then you kind of disappeared the other two. So any any issues, please think. I want you to bring all your problems. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes, I am ready. Good. Good. I'm going to use the name Charlotte. We'll still call you Charlotte. And I'm going to say, Charlotte, how are you? Um... I am well, could I? Um, oh, you don't you don't sound like your usual energetic self. I'm so glad to meet you on the street like this. I was uh, uh, literally on my way to uh, is it called Bugolobi? <laughs> and uh, I was thinking of you. So, you know, we 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 launched that thing. You were one of the most energetic participants in the class. I noticed that the second week you were there literally halfway, but because I was presenting, I couldn't come after you and you left. And then after that, we've not seen you, Charlotte. What's up? Balance, balance me here. Uh, do, do you really want to do this on the road? Um, because, okay. yeah. It's a, it's a lot. Okay, here's, okay. I see that there is a small uh, coffee shop there. Do you mind if I just buy you a drink? We sit and I, I really wanna hear this because you know, it's not just you. Uh, we've, I think lost a few other girls as well. So if you don't mind just telling me very briefly, uh, we sit, we have a quick drink. Please tell me uh, while we sip a crest bitter lemon. I know week one you were there. Tell me, you know, you were there throughout. Week two, you left halfway and then the other two weeks. Please tell me week by week what was happening. Week one. Okay, we are seated now. We are drinking crest bitter lemon. So week one, you were there. It seemed amazing. What was happening for you? What was your experience? I was excited. Mm -hmm. Time in my life to be in a room and watching my sisters using their hands. It was such a beautiful experience watching mind and hands to work, but not just weaving and mats and all that. It was <laughs> heck. Do you know wow. what that for a young girl like me? Yes, we mm -hmm. had clubs, we were in computer classes, but watching this on a level of employability, it really blew my mind. I was mm. excited to be in that space. Okay, so that was week one. You were there through the end. And I know you are one of our most active participants. You even won the only t-shirt that was available there. Uh, is that what made you come back week two? Mm, or something else? <laughs> While the t-shirt, yes, thank you very much, by the way. How the t-shirt done by one. One of my sisters, uh, 
um, I'm, I'm really another experience. It was watching, I remember week two, we went into the in-depth of it, the business. I remember watching how we wanted to see this, this grow beyond just the young girls that were there. But then I think that's when reality hit. Okay, what was that reality, Charlotte? We are not like all the other girls. Okay. We have our families. We have to have families. We, we are African girls. We are forced to put everyone and everything we've ever thought about aside and think about the responsibility we've been given as girls. Mm -hmm. I remember telling my mother about the space. She was excited for me, but she very quickly reminded me how Salongo's kid had come to greet her about a week ago, I wasn't home. I remember we had arranged a meeting with the girls and we were meeting to just rehearse and prepare for the next get together. And my, my mom mentioned that Salongo's son had, had come home, but mm -hmm. also that I called her. And I think you just had me mention that that t-shirt that I worn is being put on by my sister's kids, um, my sister passed on, mm. I think like three days into, into me preparing for the next week. That's why I had to leave halfway because I had to go to the hospital. Oh. I'm, so sorry to hear this. I'm so sorry to hear this, Charlotte. And I deeply regret that we didn't reach out to you sooner. I mean, for people who collected your details, we really should have done better. Please accept this as a heartfelt. Uh, you know, apology from me and and our community. So yeah, you've you've just gone completely quiet. How best do you think we can support you? You know, uh, we've already moved on another four weeks. Uh, you know, two weeks rather after you left, and there's four more weeks left in the program. We are halfway. There's still time. How best can we support you? How can we also support girls and women like you uh, to more easily participate? Maybe tell me three things we could do. Um, I think number one, if there was a way we could figure mobility for me, because now I, I am the breadwinner of my sister's family, um, had two children, had no, no father. So I've taken up that responsibility because my mother has been reminding me of that. So for me, it's just mobility. And if it's not mobility, how can I join virtually? I, I had the girls talking that there's some programs that are hybrid. So how can I be included without necessarily having to show up? But also if I had to show up, is there a space for those children? Because I can't leave them at home alone. Um, they're both girls. I, it's already risky enough for the girl child. So I think it would be nice if there would be a space for me to put them in or a, a hybrid system that I can join in. But mostly if there's a way that mobility can be organized for me in form of transportation, I think I can figure myself up with, out with the rest. And I'm really grateful that you're a space that even gives us the materials. So that's already easy for me. So even transportation goes a, a long way. For, but also mostly materials for me to continue from home. Mm. I liked um, when, when you put our minds to using, you know, the open source tools that existed and training us and things, it really, really excited me to know that there's things out there that don't require more of me, but can allow me to do a lot more. So uh, I materials. So if I can find a way of even having materials that I can carry home, um, be it beats, a laptop that I can carry home, but always make sure maybe the weekends I can keep it back in the office. There's a way for me to sign out for it and sign in for it take care of it so that I can continue the work at home um, when I'm just watching over these kids. That, I think that will be a way for me to continue in this because the two that I was there, even though I was there half of it, I really, really learned about it. It even helped me change my perspective. For me, wow. that would be. Wow. So, so glad to hear this. And I want to thank you once again, Charlotte, for sharing. I won't uh, hold you back uh, too long uh, as we part so that we can stay in touch. Uh, here's a small something 
uh, just that you can go and buy some data. I will definitely be in touch and we'll really take uh, up some of the solutions you've shared with the team uh, because I think this bottom-up approach works best where we get to understand what your issue is uh, and then treat you not as part of a lamp, but as an individual with some unique issues. But thank you so, so much for sharing. Uh, we'll definitely be in touch and look forward to have you participate in the next sessions. We will make sure we make it easy. Thank you. All right, thank stop here. Charlotte, you're amazing as usual. <laughs> I can see Matthew is already giving you uh, a standing ovation. Uh, I want to invite us team or all of us, let me switch on my video again. Uh, if I may invite all of us once again into the chat, uh, similar to what we did in the first exchange, please write in there any takeaways, anything you learned from that exchange, anything. Don't hesitate. You see some things that you might think don't matter, actually matter. Uh, for example, if I was listening to that exchange, uh, even though as part of it, the first thing that I know uh, is it's always helpful to hear uh, from the people who do not continue. So actively look for them. In this case, we kind of bumped each other in the street, but if you can actively look for them, uh, you'll be surprised that they not only know their problems, they can actually tell you what would solve it for them. So what we are writing in the chat now, um, thank you, Matthew, says follow up on participants is very important. And while others are typing, I want just to highlight something about this. We often collect a lot of data, you know, or data, depending on how you prefer. Uh, we will always have people sign up uh, and sign in. Please, let's use that data. It shouldn't just be registers that we then copy and send to a fund that we say, here's evidence. Uh, that people attended so that we get our grant. No, no, uh, that data is actually the thing we should be using to check when we start programs and run programs, who's been in, uh, who's come in, who's not come in, why have they not come in? Because they're also part of a community, right? I'm loving, I'm loving, I'm loving, I'm loving everything I'm seeing here. The power of offering hybrid and hands-on, absolutely two powerful points there. Uh, you can tell that it's one of the co-trainers. So hybrid, an opportunity for people to connect, whether they're here or there. And then of course, hands-on, people always remember things that they get to do. You see, this is why we wanted to get you guys to do things, but you are still fighting me. And yes, I will at this point pause and once again, invite as a final boarding call, please. If anyone has written down what they did on their triangle, uh, please share it into the group. We, we need that so that we can put together that toolbox. The need for a hybrid system, supporting transportation, materials, very helpful. I know it's a brave new world. Most things are online, but let me tell you, do not look down on how important booklets are, how important pieces of paper are. Uh, in a perfect world, we'd have actually wanted you guys to actually print it. This is why you see why we're asking you to write. Yeah, because it forces us to think, uh, but also to document. And, and, you know, we can also capture, you know, the various activities that we've done. So you can then be able to do those things from home. Uh, so really great solutions. They're following up participants in communities uh, and you adjust your programming to accommodate their needs. Yes, it's one thing to say, oh, they're going to do this. <laughs> it's another to say, what do they need? And then, you know, we call it in, uh, you know, design thinking principles come in there uh, to ensure that we have actual empathy, we have feedback, we test, and then we continue to refine our offering. When collecting participants' data, and ensure, yes, I like this one, Matthew, thank you. Details of next of kin. I've met women in programs where they had a phone this week, they don't have one next week. Now the husband has it, the brother has it, it's died. And then I hear here, learning by hearing, knowing each other's uh, uh, experience is always great. Role play, best practices. I tell you, like I said, everything we are taking you through, guys. If you didn't see it, let me announce it. Every methodology we're using, all of the tools we were using in this particular program are all part of the learning. Use them. Use them. Even if you repeat them until your community knows them, use them. Yes? Uh, always say failure is not a problem at all. Try to fail, but don't fail to try. I think that's a nice way to end this section. Uh, th thank you very much for that, uh, Matthew. Any other reflections? Following up participants is very important. Yes, with documentation, key in doing better next time and to know if there was any impact. Uh, no matter how small, uh, you may be surprised to find that in the same session, different people who have different experiences, which is fine. So document the ones that are wins. That's why we're asking you to document your wins, uh, document where the issues didn't go so well. And then that gives you an opportunity to treat this. I will tell you, 
there is no single, as I wrap things up, uh, silver bullet to treating women's inclusivity. The truth is every one of your scenarios is going to be different. That's why we asked you to do that exercise. You'll find that the solutions will also be different. But, and this is the last thing, in those solutions, there is an opportunity for all of us to learn and stimulate each other's minds on, oh, okay, this is not really our situation. I didn't think of that, but I could benefit from that. And so here's what I'll ask that we do uh, because we am checking once again uh, in the Telegram group, I don't see any pictures. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of my own medicine and also test um, where is our struggle? I, I see that there isn't anything in the in the group now. Is it that we are shy to share our work? Is it that we think our handwriting are like Kudzai's handwriting, which is not easy to read? Would we prefer to type rather than take a picture? Because I want us to use uh, these last few minutes, I'd wanted us to share what we have so that we can extract the learnings and put them in our handbook. We want your specific experiences. So I want to ask, how best do we retrieve this from you guys? This is now a question. And I'm going to go around and ask everyone because I have enough time. Um, so who do I start with there? Emmanuel, were you able to do the exercise, you or with your team? The inclusivity. Uh, yeah. Yes. Were you able to write it down? Um, yes, I was able to write the exercise. Okay. Uh, I how thought we were going to we... share it. Sure. How, how best can we receive it from you? What's the easiest and simplest way to share? We thought the Telegram group would be easy, but we've not received any submissions. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, I was because they said maybe we say it via the email. I don't know which email because I've seen there oh. like an email. Yeah. Okay. You are you are in the Telegram group. Yes. Are you able to share in the Telegram group? You can take a picture of what you wrote, uh, or if you typed, you can take a picture as well, or put it as a document, whichever is easier for you. What is easier for you? Okay. What, what is easier for you? What is the easiest way for you to share manual? Maybe I'll take a picture and put it in the telegram. Okay, please do that. Uh, Matthew, what is your easiest way? I want to get commitments from everyone. Are you with us, Matthew? Okay, Romeo, let's assume that Matthew is not connected now. Romeo, how best do we receive that short exercise from you? I guess I'll be able to send on a telegram group. Okay. But unfortunately, I, my network has been having a problem. So I think I properly get the exercise. <laughs> I went off and on at some point, yeah. That's fine. So all we need from you guys is the, for us to complete uh, is for you to just put your exercises in the Telegram group. And uh, it doesn't have to be lengthy. We actually prefer it to be very short. Uh, what you did in class when you were doing with Soneni last week is everything we need. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, it hello. If, it seems as, as if Kudzai has been booted out of the meeting. I think your he, he network is unstable. So um, she was going around asking about um, the ways in which you think we can get the feedback from you. So any suggestions are welcome. Please let us know. If you've got any suggestions, just uh, unmute yourself and let us know, or rather type in the chat box. It will, it will really help us know how we can best meet your needs. Isn't we're talking about inclusion just now. We don't want you to be left out. We really need your input because it's really important for us to get an overview of your experiences as well.
So do we all agree that we are going to use the telegram? Charlotte, are we going to get your, your feedback in the, in the telegram group? Yes. Thank you. So we hope we'll get those ones maybe in the next 30 minutes to one hour. That would really help. Uh, thank you so much. We are almost out of time. Thank you so much for, for listening here. You guys have been amazing participants, very active, and we really, we really enjoyed your company. Thank you so much.